Hi guys, today I wanted to show you how you can combine Xtile's non-repetitive functions with Ultra Dynamic Sky. Uh, one thing to note, this video will not be an in-depth look in either of the two products' capabilities, but more of a way on how to connect the two together. So let's quickly have a look at the functions that we will be using. Here are the functions from Ultra Dynamic Sky. We have a wet and snow weather effects function as well as a dynamic landscape weather effects. Here we have Xtile functions and Xland that I'll be showing at the end. Uh, Xland, uh, sorry, Xtile functions are more or less uh, the same, and I will not be showing you all because it's quite straightforward to uh, connect. Uh, the only difference is that in the base, you would uh, need to connect the uh, function directly to a texture sample, and you would also need to have a um, texture coordinate system in the input of the function. In the more advanced versions of Xtile Plus and Excite, uh, you basically need just to connect the Xtile, uh, sorry, the uh, texture object into the slot, and all the more advanced capabilities are already within the function itself. And here, let's have a look at the setup. Uh, quite straightforward, here are the two functions found from Ultra Dynamic Sky, and this is just basically taken from their uh, demo level. Uh, and the only difference is that I have a, a snow tiling uh, uh, UVs that I uh, created for a little bit more control. Uh, here I dragged in the um, uh, Geo Compact and basically just connected the albedo, the roughness and normal to the wet weather effect and then from here continued to the snow. Um, the AO went directly into the material as there was no AO in the weather effect. And uh, the only place that I wanted to focus a little bit more your attention on is this area where I have my height and my height map is um, necessary to control the wetness and snow effect of the uh, ultra dynamic sky. And what I did basically is I used one of the textures from the texture sample, the displacement, and I also added an other mask uh, to it. So let me just move this out of the way. Let's move this also out of the way, which is basically just the tessellation, sorry, the um, displacement uh, for the uh, surface. Um, and here is all that I have done, basically using some sort of contrast for the um, displacement coming from the texture sample and then adding another mask with a switch and another contrast uh, just to have a little bit, a little bit more variation in control. Now <clears throat> in using this uh, type of function, the RGO Compact, I used the uh, Mask 2 slot and uh, went from the Mask 2 directly to the uh, uh, contrast here, uh, contrast parameter. Uh, for whatever reason, if you wanted not to go this route and wanted to keep this slot open for something else, you could just import a texture sample, bring in the random UVs, and just uh, hook them up in this way directly. So um, this way you have the Mask 2 slot uh, free uh, for whatever reason. Uh, here, again, is another type of uh, function found in Xtype Plus and Excite. I wanted to show you this because this one has its own uh, displacement already uh, inside a displacement output. So in this case, if I were to use this function, I would just simply uh, come out and uh, use the base here of the contrast. And I would turn this into a color. And I would use it this way. And also, of course, connect the corresponding slots and this one. And finally, here we have a uh, one taken from Xtile uh, Base. And if I move these out of the way and take this, let's just hook this up so you can see how it's done. So here I would take the albedo, put it here, the roughness, I believe it's this one, the AO, it's this one, the normal is this one, and the mask 2, which is our 
displacement is this one. Again, let's change this to color. No, all good. Okay, and let's put this back here. And let's take this out. And here we have exactly the same thing using X-Tile uh, Base. So uh, I want to show you this one as well, but this is very similar. It's exactly more or less the same thing, actually. But just to show you, this uses one of the uh, org um, organic uh, non-aligned pattern functions. And it's the same sort of setup. Um, the height goes from the wetness to the snow. Um, this uh, is the displacement. And this is the way that I did the height with uh, the additional mask. So uh, I know I said I'm not going to show you any of the capabilities of the um, of either of the products, and I'm not. But I need to change the some of this um, texture here. Let's change some of the parameters very quickly. Let's change this to 0 0.25 to rotate it. Let's increase the random seed, uh, and let's also just uh, change the slide columns. And here we have a non-repetitive uh, brick surface. Uh, you can increase this to any amount, and you would still get uh, a non-repetitive uh, surface, and it is also world aligned. So with that, uh, let's get that out of the way, and let's come down and see what we can do with our ultra dynamic weather uh, here let's change it to something like light rain maybe and you can see the effect that you get look at this uh, wonderful sort of dripping effect coming down on the uh, on the surface on the material uh, you have also this um, uh, puddles that get created uh, and are interactive with the rain. Um, and let's change this to something a little more dramatic. Let's go to thunderstorm, perhaps. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that you have some repetitions in the puddles, and that's why uh, that extra mask is uh, essential. So if I add it, you immediately see that uh, we get rid of the uh, tiling. Um, again, it's wonderful to see and watch. Uh, let's also try another effect here. Let's go to something like, uh, I don't know, light snow maybe. So here uh, we have a um, snow effect. Let me turn this off because I want to show you something as well. Um, as you can see, uh, you have the same sort of tiling uh, of the snow. Now, depending on, of course, on some of your settings or what your environment is, it should not may not be a problem, but there is a way around it using, again, uh, one of the functions found in X-Tile. I wanted to show you how it's done. First, let me show you the result. So if I come here and change this to the instance of the X, here you can see uh, how it is with uh, this uh, method. And also here, if I come and change it, you will see that we can break up that uh, tiling if it is an issue. And let me show you quickly how I did it. Uh, here is the snow weather effect. And basically what I did is I uh, duplicated the snow texture and used this uh, our org seamless function found in Xtile Plus and Excite and just connected them like so. Uh, the UVs go to the second uh, texture texture uh, sample and the uh, LERPs, uh, the LERP alpha output goes to the alpha of the LERPs that connect the RGBs and then they go to wherever they were going before. And these are some of the parameters you can play around with. So with that, let me just get that out of the way. And I think that's it. So let's have a look at the um, uh, XLAN now, because I want to show you um, what K 
can be done with xland as well so let's uh, quickly open this up let's give it a second so here we are in xland xland is the non-repetitive landscape material that is part of the x tile family uh, and this one is connected to the ultra dynamic sky so let's uh, quickly have a look on how i did the connection uh, let's open one of the masters let's open this one with four layers and uh, let's uh, bring it in and basically this is uh, excellent uh, for material uh, setup for layer material setup and excellent comes with its own puddle and wetness system but uh, it is not dynamic so Let's uh, change that and use the ultra dynamic sky one. So we can just simply delete these nodes here so that we can clear uh, how they look. And let's also delete the stuff here. And let's come here and type in weather and dynamic landscape weather effects. Here we just take the base with the base specular uh, roughness and normal and here we go to base specular roughness normal so I think we can delete this now quite safely and let's just go world position offset world displacement and here we can simply connect the world position offset, world displacement, and the tessellation multiplier. Uh, we need also to add this puddle color opacity. So if we come here, do that puddle color opacity, and that's all we need to do. And from here, what we can do now is just change some of the weather systems and let's see what happens. Let's go with thunderstorm and you can see how quickly we can change the scenery into this sort of wild and wet environment. Uh, we can uh, again come here perhaps and change it to say this blizzard again this amazing uh, way to quickly uh, change the environment um, and another one that i truly like is this uh, light snow which is i thought really pretty of course as i said there's many parameters to uh, change and to play with uh, in both products so um, once uh, you have them installed, you can try different things, uh, both in the uh, Ultra Dynamic Sky and in the x products. Uh, and that's it. Um, I hope you guys uh, found this uh, useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below. Uh, thanks for watching and take care, guys. Bye.